CEO Hour, an hour-long program that brings and hosts chief executive officers from different companies or institutions to talk about what they do. We encourage business leaders from companies and organizations, big and small, to come together in a form to share ideas and help business corporation in Sierra Leone. If you are a CEO and you would like to come and speak at CEO Hour, then find out more. Tune in to Heart Business Radio 88.1 FM, the first business radio show in Sierra Leone. You are listening to Hot Biz FM 88.1, the first business radio station in Sierra Leone. Today on CEO Hour, we're here with Mustafa Ninjai, the Gambian real estate mogul and TAF Africa Global founder, who has announced plans to create at least 25 million jobs across sub Sahara Africa by 2040. TAF is short for Mustafa. In a recent interview with The Voice Gambia, Mustafa unveiled the company's plans to build 1 million homes in sub-Sahara Africa by 2040. Mustafa founded TAF Africa Global in 1990 to develop real estate in Africa. In 2018, he created a new mission for the company to develop 1 million homes in the next 20 years. Welcome Mustafa Najai to CEO Hour. Please introduce yourself to our audience all across West Africa. Well, thank you very much, uh, Madonna. Um, uh, I think you've done the introduction already. You know, I tell people all the time that um, my introduction is easy these days with technology. Just talk to my uncle. You know my uncle, huh? Everybody knows my uncle. Uncle Google, huh? Talk to Uncle Google or you talk to Auntie YouTube and you'll get everything about me. But on a more serious note, my name is Mustafa Njai, as you said. I am a real estate developer, born Gambian, but truly African. I mean, my drive and what I do, it's on a continental basis. So um, that's who I am. I am in Sierra Leone today trying to develop 5,000 homes. Yeah. It's just absolutely incredible what you're trying to do with these 5,000 homes. Um, Tough Salon Micro City in John Obey. I mean, we can see behind us here in the backdrop the, the beautiful landscaping and the way you've done your scales. I mean, you know, it's so exciting. Please tell us more about this 5,000 homes. Well, uh, thank you. Yeah. 5,000, uh, uh, what we've done is, before we come into any country, we do our own uh, feasibility. So we've done our studies, and um, we think within our capacity, we should be able to put up about 5,000 units over the next 10 years. So we're starting with John Obe. John Obe, it's 80 hectares. Uh, 80 hectares, but we're putting 1,250 units in John Obe. It's um, 80 hectares, or 80, yeah, 80 hectares or 200 acres that we're putting up. So um, uh, we'll be starting sometime in October. As you can see here, we've set up our offices already. Uh, so uh, that's important to us. So anybody who's buying, because we sell off plan, we sell off plan. So you need to have confidence uh, in the people or the developer so that you can pay, you know, up front. Um, then uh, set up the model. So anybody who comes in as a layman, you still need to understand where and, and, or identify where your property will be. So that has been done now. That's the first phase. So we're moving on to the second phase, which is in October after the 15th. For obvious reasons, the um, rains will probably cease around that time, and then we're going full force onto site. Um, Mustafa, you have 45 years plus experience in running your own business in the construction, housing, and real estate sector. Can you tell our audience the brief history of this journey? Well, I, I, I left um, uh, high school at 18, like everybody else, and uh, stubborn and just following my passion. I mean, I, I graduated from high school in 1975, but I, I was just passionate about working with my hands, technically. And I had a Division Two at that time in woodwork, which was unheard of at the time, simply because people didn't want to be seen after leaving high school to be doing anything technical. But I think it was a blessing for me that I just followed my passion. That's what I loved, working with my hands. And I got employed in the same school that I graduated. You know, I graduated in June and I was employed in September as a junior teacher. And that's where my career started. So from 75 to date, it's 48 years actually. I have been working nonstop. And since then, I've just developed myself. I mean, I've worked for, as a teacher, for about a year and a half. 
and then I went into construction, working for international firms. And I've done everything in construction, you know, from being an engineer's assistant to a project manager to an assistant general manager. And in 1990, I started my own business, which is, it was called Tough Construction. So in the Gambia, I've done quite a number of things. I mean, from construction, building material sales. I used to own a hotel, you know, so but if everything real estate related. And in 2000, I went full time into real estate development, started in the Gambia. But see, after that, you know, I found uh, the niche to expand into the sub-region. Um, it's a long story. I've been into so many countries, uh, not only in West Africa, but across um, the continent. Uh, I have been to 36 African countries so far, you know, and um, I have registered my business in nine African countries now. But we're very active in Nigeria, in Gambia, and now in, the, in Sierra Leone. So here we are. There needs to be continuity. I have now developed a team that without me, they will function. And that's what we are out there to do. I mean, I'm 66, so I'm no longer a kid. So, um, but there needs to be continuity. Africa needs to show that we have continuity within businesses that have been set up by indig um, indigenous. So that's the process that I am in now. You know, after having successfully developed what you can see now, it's the next stage, which is now handing it over to the next generation. Um, you are employing and empowering so many people across African continent. What is your motivation in doing so? I mean, for example, um, this is just a side note. In Sierra Leone, as you can see, there's a lot of Lebanese and Indians and other nationalities that are actually the power base. So it's so refreshing to see an African coming here and, and doing this kind of thing where you're employing and empowering so many people. What's your motivation? Well, the motivation is that I, I want to, it's a statement actually, just like you said. I mean, I've always said that, look, if anybody can do it, I can do it. If Steve Jobs can do it, I can do it. Uh, if um, uh, all the big names, if Richard Branson can do it, I can do it. And I think that's something that Africans need to inculcate in themselves. We're seeing Ali Kodangote, for example, in Nigeria. The refinery, oil refinery that he's building in Nigeria is the biggest in the world. It's not in Africa. Yes, it's the biggest in the world being built in Nigeria. And it's a reality. So, I mean, uh, there are some entrepreneurs that have broken the glass ceiling already. And that's the, my motivation, that in real estate development, more so in affordable housing, that's where we specialize. So we are not looking at building luxury and making the biggest of margins, but we want to provide housing for the middle-income Africans. So that's my motivation, but in also trying to build houses or develop um, these micro cities and cities, we also want to create employment because everybody knows that, you know, 60 something percent of the African population are all youthful. They're all youth. And we owe it to them to provide that opportunity for them to work. So on average, uh, every house that is built, you know, will employ about 25 direct jobs. So if you multiply a million homes by 25, that's 25 million jobs that can be created. So that's my motivation and um, we are on track. Shout out to Wode Maya, Mr. Ghana Baby, Africa's biggest YouTuber, who introduced you to some of us with his show that was titled How a Gambian Carpenter Built Nigeria's Biggest Estate. Please tell us the story behind Rift Taff Golf Estate, where you built 1,100 homes in Port Harcourt. Yeah. Um, well, just a point of correction, I mean, it's not the biggest in Nigeria, uh, but it's the biggest in the south-south of Nigeria, so far, in River State. And um, yes, it's a thousand, hundred units or a bit more uh, with a golf course. Um, and um, it was fully developed uh, within seven, eight years. We started in 2012. By 2018 or so, it was all sold out. And now it's fully functional. People are living there. Um, it's a PPP, which is a public-private partnership with the River State government. And uh, that's our speciality. In here in Sierra Leone, that's what we're doing too. What was unique about um, the uh, Reef Staff Golf Estate project was that the land was massy. It was all water, just like what you see over there. That's what the swampy, very, very swampy. So we had to sand fill the land, you know, have it all well compacted, then build on it. But this is not new. If you go to Dubai, it's happening. Actually, in Dubai, I mean, the palms and others, what they're doing is they're extending into the sea and develop things. So we can do it. It can be done. 
Yeah, or they build within the sea. If you go to the banks, you will see that the, the palms are like a palm tree. Uh, so they designed this and then put the sand. Or the world, the world they've created, you know, mini islands, you know, replicating the world and people will believe on it. So it is something that's doable. So um, yes, this is the story behind the Riftstaff Golf Estate. Again, I was invited by the River State Governor at the time, which that's what we do. We don't just get into any country. We get invited for the brand and for who we are. So coming into Sierra Leone, we were invited by the president to come in here. So once we're invited, we do our due diligence, do our feasibility, just to justify that, yes, it's doable and there's a demand. And once we are convinced, we move in. And that's why we're here. Um, you once said the formula to success is to work hard and be honest. Can you expand on that? Well, I mean, that's pretty simple and very straightforward. I mean, they, you look, no pain, no gain, as they say. I mean, and there's no short route to, to, to success. And the reason why I said so, the generation that we're seeing now of the young people, they think that, you know, life is built within a day. I have a 48 year experience and working life. So if I drive my G wagon and you're sitting there at 35, you think you should have it. Easy and short way doesn't give you access to these things. You have to work hard for it. And there's dignity also in doing this. But the youthful population of today don't believe in this formula. So I, and I think that is a formula that is here to stay. If you don't work hard, you will not succeed. And honesty also pays. Honesty is contractual. If you want to buy a house, what we have is that, look, I am paying a certain amount of money to you, which is my money's worth for a house. And that I owe you that, that's contractual. So I must be honest for the trust that you have in me to deliver the house that you want. But it's very common that people will pay for something and they are giving less than the value that is intended. It's not only in housing, but across the board. So for the young ones who are upcoming and want to make it in life, for me, that's my advice, that you must be ready to work hard and you must be honest in everything that you do. And in most cases, if you do it, you will succeed. That's my, that's my formula. Mustafa, what message would you tell your younger self, that little boy in Banju, the Gambia? What message would you tell him? Well, I, will, uh, I had always believed in myself. I've always had an innovative mind. I never regretted doing anything uh, that brought me to where I am today. So um, some are unlucky that they don't follow their passion for a lot of reasons. If you come from a traditional family of lawyers, at times uh, their parents just want to see a lawyer being born or remain in the family. So if you were good as a fashion designer, they will not allow you to do it. So I am happy that my family supported me in what I wanted to do. I had always had the instincts of an entrepreneur. From a very young, young age, if I look back on the things that I have done then, if there was anybody who was looking over me at the time, like today, they will see those entrepreneurial skills in me. That doesn't happen these, well, now it happens at times because people are coming, they're, they're completely getting off their conventional cause into what they would like to do. Um, so uh, looking back at my young age, Mustafa in Banjul, no regrets. I had never regretted doing what I did. Um, there were points where, or times where one would have diverted one's call uh, because uh, being a carpenter at that age wasn't the thing i mean uh, anybody looking Jesus at you a carpenter. yeah but not not these days even now if you were to have your child you know uh, go to school go to high school and probably graduate you know with a good degree or so or about to go to college and he comes and tell you oh mommy i want to go do carpentry not many parents will say yes let's face it Africans yes, yes, yes. Mostly what we will see, one, white-collared jobs. And in every generation, there is the thing. Like today, the thing is going to do with technology, you know, um, tech. That's what the thing is, you know. So um, I will tell my young self, young Mustafa in Banjul, that, you know, anybody who wants to follow those steps, do it. Follow your passion. That's the way to work in life. Just follow your passion. Nice one. Follow your passion, people. And finally, Mustafa, what words of encouragement would you give to our audience out there, especially the young boys and girls who would want to become builders, construction and real estate entrepreneurs one day? Well, let me expand it beyond these young boys and girls. I have been asked by Woody Meyer again uh, that, look, if there was one thing 
I wanted to change in Africa, what would it be? And my answer was leadership. Africa is suffering from, well, it's going through a lot of struggles. Because as I said, 70% of the population are young and, and the un unemployment rate is high. Population growth is increasing by about 2.5% per annum. What that simply means that in the next 30 years or 33 years, if you think that Sierra Leone now people are congested here with 8 million, it's going to be 16 million because the land will not expand but the population will. So uh, we must be futuristic. We must think beyond our own generation. And today in Africa, what we have seen is that our leaders look only at their political term. Everything they want to do, oh, I want to finish it. And that's why we are seeing them trying to expand their mandate. Oh, no, no, my projects are not finished yet, so they want to change the constitution. It's very common. And v nowadays, what we are seeing right in front of us is militaries moving in. And that is not helping us also. So I think we need to be futuristic, uh, not only to these young ones, but those who are leading us, that's where it starts. Uh, they must look beyond themselves. They must look beyond their four or five year term. And uh, then for the young ones, you know, uh, life is more of a marathon than a hundred meter dash. You know, it takes time to achieve what you want to do. So again, whatever you are good in, develop it, follow your passion uh, with the qualities I've just told you. Work hard, be honest. You know, uh, there are quite a lot I can list in terms of values that one needs to succeed. And I would encourage them, you know, to take their time to do this. Thank you so much, Mustafa Njai, for talking with us here on CEO Hour. Thank you. You are listening to Heartbiz FM 88.1, the first business radio station in Sierra Leone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. CEO Hour, an hour-long program that brings and hosts chief executive officers from different companies or institutions to talk about what they do. We encourage business leaders from companies and organizations, big and small, to come together in a form to share ideas and help business corporation in Sierra Leone. If you are a CEO and you would like to come and speak at CEO Hour, then find out more. Tune in to Heart Business Radio 88.1 FM, the first business radio show in Sierra Leone. <laughs>